Let's make a pair of winding sticks, and let's make them kind of quick so we can get onto projects that are more fun. I've got a piece of white pine here. It's perfectly fine for winding sticks. I like a light colored wood, it's easy to see. This piece is 16 inches long, but you can go a little bit longer or shorter. I used this piece in another project, so I prepped the faces nice and smooth and flat, and this edge is nice and perpendicular. Let's double check it. Yeah, the edge is great, and the only real problem with this piece is this really ragged edge over here. I almost gave myself a splinter right there. So the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that ragged edge and give ourselves two parallel edges. Let me come over here with my marking gauge, and I'm gonna reset my gauge to the narrowest part of the wood, so I'm avoiding the worst part of that split. And I can fine adjust the gauge a bit on the bench. And you can see I'm bracing the wood against my planing stop. I can use my belly to hold it if I want, but this piece is kind of short, so I'll use my hand. And I'm pushing the gauge, but I'm being gentle. As I get down to the bottom of the stroke here, I'm gonna tilt the piece so the stock of my gauge doesn't hit the bench and throw my line off. Now I've got two lines there. Well, one line that I've done twice, so it's nice and deep. And I'm gonna rotate the piece, register against the same edge, and run that line again down at the bottom, tilting the piece a little bit, keeping the stock away from the bench. And there we go. Now, anytime I'm working in pine or another light wood, I always run a pencil in my gauge lines. It's not just for the camera. They're very difficult to see. This is beetle kill pine, so it has that characteristic bluish tint. It's kind of cool, but it does make layout lines tougher to see. Pencil will fix that. Now I just want to get down to my line. This isn't enough wood to saw off, but it would be a lot of wood to plane off if I were using a very finely set plane. So instead, I'm going to go with my four plane. It's very aggressive with a very cambered iron. And as I get the worst of the material off, I'll start taking longer strokes. And I'm paying really close attention to my layout lines. I'm a little bit high in the middle, a couple of stop shavings in the middle, a little bit towards the end there. Another couple of strokes right down the middle of the board to get close to my lines. I think one more. Now I'm very close. And I stayed with that tool for as long as I could because it's the fastest. Now I'm at my fine set jack plane, taking a medium shaving, watching my layout lines, taking a few shavings in the middle where I have more stock to remove. And at the end close to me, I wanna make sure I get a good final pass. I'm gonna reset my plane for a finer cut. And I'm gonna use my pinch grip where I hold the toe and keep the middle of that iron right over the center of my work. I'm gonna take one, two, three strokes. They were full length, full width. And I see the tops of my layout lines emerging. There's a little raggedness on the edge of the board. That's how I know I'm in my gauge lines. Both my faces are flat, but this one feels a bit smoother, so I'm gonna use that as my reference edge. Here's the edge I just planed, let's check. And yes, it is dead square, and because I worked to an accurate gauge line, it's dead parallel, except I can see one little problem right at the far end, I'm a little high. So a little bit of localized planing there. That's perfect. So now I've got a nice piece of wood that's dead parallel on both sides, very even and flat. Now what I'm gonna do is rip it in half. Let's have a look at how much stock I've ended up with. I've got uh, two and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna set my gauge to one and an eighth roughly, and I wanna go right down the middle of this piece, so I'm gonna put one tick with the gauge, register it off one side, then I'm gonna rotate the board around and do another little tick, and those marks don't meet 
which means my gauge needs to be set for a little bit more distance. I'm going to tap adjust it on the bench until it goes in the middle of the two tick marks I just made. As soon as that gauge is in the middle, I know for sure that I'm right in the center of the board. Mark that line. Again, using my planing stop and rotating the work at the end. That looks good. Rotate end for end, register on the same line. Two lines, rotate, come cleanly off the edge. And as I'm looking, I see I've got a tiny bit of layout line in the last four inches of this edge. Now that's not the edge I was registering against, so it hasn't thrown my project off. But now's a good time to go in and make that final adjustment. There, that's much closer. Don't be afraid to go back and adjust your work. It's okay. Now, I'm gonna mark that rip line with pencil. Now this is a pretty narrow and delicate rip, and I'd like it to come as best as it could off the saw, but doing rip cuts like this isn't easy, and I'm not ashamed to admit that it's not my strongest skill. So I'm gonna try and give myself every advantage. I'm using my rack stop in the vise to get a really good grip. And then I'm going to square that line across my end grain, which is gonna help me start my saw on track. Now I'm using a panel saw for this. It's a fine saw with cross cut teeth. It can cross cut and rip. It was traditionally used for both. I'm gonna make sure to set my sawing stance really carefully, pinch that work and get right on the line, draw the saw back until I have a nice trench started. And then push forward a couple of strokes. Now the line is started nicely. And the trick with this is I'm gonna take full strokes going slowly and keeping that saw plumb. <laughs> Moving up in the vise and going back to my cut, nice and slow, full strokes. And then with a piece this narrow, you usually have to flip it end for end, which is fine. Remember to start with the piece low in the vise and give yourself that square line across the end grain. Give yourself every advantage when you're starting. This isn't an easy cut. Because I took my time, that cut came out pretty decent, and I can just split it apart. There's a little bit of rag here, but I'm gonna take that off pretty easily. I'm gonna put that saw away because I'm not gonna need it for the rest of the project. And now what I wanna do is figure out how much of this wood I can use. I made sure to allow myself extra, so it's the same thing. I'm gonna set that gauge to the lowest point on the wood. And I have to check both pieces because whatever gauge setting I use has to work for both of them. So I have a setting of just over an inch right now, and that's gonna work just fine for this piece. Let's check it against this one, and it looks like I don't have quite an inch of wood. I don't, and that's fine. This is completely non-critical. Okay, that setting is going to give me the minimum amount of wood, or maybe the maximum amount, for each piece. I'm going to register against my known true edge, and strike that line, 
Firm but gentle pressure, no reason to try and do it in one shot. The gauge will probably just wander off the piece if you do that. Flip the piece end for end so you're still registering against the same face. Good, that piece is marked. Now we'll take our second piece and do the same thing. And what we're looking for here is two fairly identical pieces of wood. Good, now again, we're gonna pencil our layout lines. And now I'm gonna plane off all that wood that was left over from my rip cut. I've got a lot of material here in the back of this piece, so for that I'll go to the four plane. Watching my layout lines, being careful, and that is the bulk of the material, so it's time to put aside the coarse tool and go to the fine tool. And I need to tighten my vise just a bit and bring the work up just a bit as well. There we go. Same thing as before. Close eye on those layout lines. We're just coming down to them. Now we're gonna reset for a finer cut. I have no cut as I come back to the wood, and I'm slowly gonna advance the cutter. And I'm taking an interrupted cut, so I know this surface is not smooth and straight. I'm looking for the same thing, a sudden raggedness. Let me come show the camera if I can. There's a raggedness along the corners. That means I'm in my gauge lines. That's exactly what I want. That means I've kept things nice and parallel, and I can see I'm a tiny bit high on my far end. So, tightening the vise is very important, obviously. <laughs> Couple of quick swipes on that end, just to see those gauge lines emerge. There we are, and We're getting full length, full width shavings. We're in our gauge lines the whole way across. Everything looks good there. Now we're to this other piece and it has a lot more waist. So again, I'm gonna set aside my finely set jack and I'm gonna go back to my four plane, always using the coarsest tool whenever possible to save time and to save effort. Good. Close to my lines now, good time to come back to my plane, my finely set plane. Advance the cut for a medium shaving. I have a very interrupted cut, which means I'm not down to flat yet. Higher on this side. So pinch cut, shift the plane over. Take some shavings to favor this far corner. Pinch cut, pinch grip I should say, in the middle. Good, the raggedness on the edges tells me that I'm in my gauge lines. I think I'm high on this edge though. So let's have a look with the square. And I was right, I am high on that edge. After you've been doing this for a minute, you can tell by eye, but I still have to double check with the square. Pinch grip, shift the plane over to this left-hand side where I'm high. One, two, three shavings favoring that side. Pinch grip to the center. One, two, three shavings in the center. Full length, full width shavings. Down to my lines the whole way across. They look really good. Now I'm almost finished, believe it or not. 
And what I'm going to do is put my two sticks together, and I might try them a couple different ways to make sure they're pretty even, and then feel, and they're very close to being really perfectly mated, but not exactly. There's a little bit of highness in the middle. Now, I can put these in the vise. Let's see what happens. This is not the best vise, and I don't know if it provides even enough clamping pressure. Yeah, the boards are separating along that seam a little bit. It's only the thickness of a sheet of paper, so I think it's okay. It's that wooden jaw. It's not as rigid as a cast iron jaw, but it's all right for this. Same light setting of the plane. Going right down the middle. It's a very light stroke, taking a very fine shaving. And I can just tell by feel that they're quite even. And that little bit of raggedness is in the middle, it means I'm right on that gauge line. I like that. I've still got these two pieces pinched together, and let's just have a look. Oh, yes. They're very, very flat and square. So these are good. Now, it's important for me to remember the orientation that I have here. And so I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm just going to draw a line across the edge here. And that way I can always match these two up and tell which way they were going. And I'll also do a line just across this top corner. That way it's very easy for me to always put these two sticks in the same orientation and know that I'm always using them the same way. Now this stick is gonna be the one close to me, and this is gonna be the one further away. And a lot of people will inlay a piece of wood or do something tricky to make sure it has the right contrast, but I'm just gonna take this marker and using my finger gauge technique to make it fairly neat, I'm gonna come across and just mark a nice thick black line. And the top of the line is gonna be straight and flat because it's hitting the top of the piece of wood that's been planed with really surgical precision. And that's plenty, that's all the contrast I really need. Because when I go to use these, the stick close to me is very pale. And then I've created a dark stripe on the stick that's further away. And it's very easy to see. I have excellent contrast and the sticks line up perfectly, which they should, because I just built this bench recently and I know it's perfectly flat. That's a pair of winding sticks. They are perfectly good, ready to go. That's it. It's really fun to have fancy winding sticks made out of exotic wood with contrasting inlays. I've even got a bit of brass in these. These are great to have, but they took me like a whole day. And when you think about what winding sticks actually do, that might be a waste of time. Winding sticks are just two parallel lines and they show you differences in a board. It's not even necessary for the sticks to be exactly the same thickness as long as both sticks are identical. They could be higher on this side and lower on this side. If these two top surfaces are dead parallel to each other, then when you put them on the work, they're gonna show you differences in the wood. They're gonna show you wind and twist. And this basic set we made works every bit as well as this fancy set that I made. You might think pine is not an appropriate wood for this, but it's perfect. Light colors are very easy to see, especially with that black line I drew in Sharpie. That's all the contrast I need. It's gonna work perfectly. Also, softwoods don't move as much with seasonal variations. When the humidity changes, this stock is gonna move less than, say, oak, which I use for a lot of my projects. So pine's a great choice for this. I'm also gonna put on a film finish, either shellac or polyurethane. That slows down the transfer of moisture and is gonna make these even more stable. You could make a set of these and use these as your only winding sticks for years and years. You don't have to get fancy, and no matter what, don't 
drive yourself crazy trying to create some perfect work of art. A lot of people, me included, we get a little carried away when we make videos about these. So I wanted to make a video showing how super simple it can be. You've also got to cut yourself a break as you're doing them. It's a skill builder. I tried to shoot this video earlier this morning and I snapped this piece of wood while I was rip cutting it. That's it. I pulled out too far and tried to jam it back in and I just cracked it. I wasn't being mindful as I worked and I had to start over. It's fine, just start over. It's no big deal. My new four plane, made by my buddy Austin. You can follow him on Instagram. He's a skilled plane maker, luthier, does a bunch of stuff. Check him out, patreon.com slash Rex Kruger. These videos are only possible because of my patrons. No ads, no sponsors, no free stuff, just viewer supported content, trying to make these things more accessible to you. I really appreciate you coming along for this little build. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.